Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Da, 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 da. La, 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 Now you sing beautifully, Gertrude. I like to sing. I like to do everything. Wash, iron, cook. Oh, what you're cooking this minute smells absolutely heavenly. You sure I can't help you? Help and waste time. I mean, if you want dinner by 7 o'clock. Mm, there's something in what you say. I can manage. Here, take these sandwiches and have your drinks out on the grass under the apple tree. <gasps> oh, dear. Gertrude, you're an angel. I wanted everything particularly nice for Mr. Killian, and it is. Finger bowls, too. I saw him get out of the car, and I said to myself, Gertrude, there's a man that likes finger bowls. You're right. He's a very punctilious person. Yet he's so nice, really. I think he would be if he's Mr. Norton's partner. How nice. Say, ain't it lucky your ma went to town for a couple of days, or he couldn't stay tonight? Oh, I don't think he'd stay anyway. He's on his way to Boston to see his son. He just stopped off. Say, isn't it lucky we had a turkey sitting in the icebox, just waiting to be cooked? If you leave it to Gertrude, she'll never be caught short when company comes. Here, don't forget the little napkin. Some of them sandwiches is leaking. Oh, thanks. Come along, Bluff. Get up. I'll open them under Gertrude's feet there. Leave him be. He don't want to go. You don't want to go? He likes to stay with Gertrude. Him and me, we get along fine, we do. All right for you, Bluff. Come on, Shakespeare. You come on out and see your Uncle Roger. Cat don't want to go neither. Leave him be. Oh, dear. Here. I'll hold the door open for you. Sure it ain't heavy for you. Three glasses and a plate? What do you think I am? Uh, mind you, go out on the lawn and don't bother till I call you. Pleasure's all mine. Hey, David, take this tray for me, will you? So, that's where you've been. Yep. We wondered where you disappeared. Mmm, Do I... order. Wonderful. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. I cannot tell a lie, Roger, I didn't. Gertrude did. Who's Gertrude? Didn't David tell you? Uh, he only just got here. He's been busy looking at all the improvements we made since the last time he was oh. here. We haven't gotten around to Gertrude yet. Hmm. These are good. What are they? Different kinds. The one you just ate is um, cheese or something. Mm -hmm. What's the one I'm going to eat? Let me taste it and I'll tell you. Mmm. Mm, but fish or something. Now listen, stop it. Don't let Gertrude catch us eating them. Well, isn't that what they're for? If not, I've been robbed. Yes, but not here. Gertrude has given strict orders we're not to, we're to have our drinks under the apple tree. I suppose you'll get around eventually to telling me who Gertrude is. Who is Gertrude? Who is David, she? be quiet. She'll hear you. She'll leave. Gertrude, I now begin to suspect, is the new maid. You suspect correctly. And she's like no maid you ever heard of before. In a class all by herself. She certainly is. You're very fortunate. Actually, most of them simply won't go way out in the country like this. Well, there's a trick to it. Gertrude lives way out in the country. <laughs> in fact, she lives right down the road a piece. Listen to him down the road a piece. He's already taken on her lingo. <laughs> Hurry up, David. Dinner's almost ready. The apple tree's waiting for us. Look, I, I don't like to eat outdoors. Oh. Shame on you. What's the matter with the living room? But the apple tree's in bloom. I heartily applaud Gertrude's taste. It's the most gorgeous sight I ever saw. Well, it's just as gorgeous through the window, without bugs dropping on you. Shame on you, too. Oh, we are overruled, David, by a vast majority. Oh, no, no, not so fast. I have a confession to make. I don't like bugs myself. Oh. I always think it's rather an exploded idea, all this eating out of doors. Oh, good, then you're one of us. Come on, David, you take the tray. Gertrude's got the chairs and tables all set out for us. I see. Gertrude says we go under the apple tree, so out we go under the apple tree. Exactly. Exactly. Are you mice or men? Mice. mice. <laughs> <laughs> so would you be if you lived miles away from nowhere and you had a new baby coming in an old house. Say no more. Circumstances alter cases. Here, David, let me carry the order. Go away. I don't trust you. Hmm. This one's peanut butter. I want my money back. Oh. And what's wrong with peanut butter? Mmm. Delicious. I think it's mixed with horseradish or something. Is it? I don't know. Gertrude keeps her secrets to herself. I can't wait until I meet this remarkable female. Mm. Uh oh, not 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 so much, David. And Claudia? Mm, uh, just a little Coca Cola. And if it's no trouble, I think I'll change my mind and have the same. Oh, it's lovely out here, isn't it? Smells so fresh and damp with twilight. Oh, 
It does. Well, I have to admit it. Gertrude was right. This is better than indoors. Yep. What's that? What? That. Sounded like thunder. Oh, it is thunder. For goodness sakes, there's going to be a storm. <gasps> Look, lightning. Oh, I hope it's going to be a good one while it's about it. You astound me, Claudia. Why? Because I see standing before me a woman who is not only not afraid of thunder and lightning, but who seems to enjoy it. Well, I've never been hit by it. Maybe that's why. She's just <laughs> modest. I don't think she'd be scared of it anyway. You know, Roger, she's quite an extraordinary person. Uh, which person are we talking about now? Gertrude or Claudia? Me, because I'm not afraid of a storm. Astonishing. Oh, oh. oh that was a good one. Wasn't it, though? Look at the sky, Wendy. It's like big gusts of smoke rolling over the heavens. Why, she even gets poetical in a storm. <laughs> I tell you, she's a very remarkable person, that wife of mine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here comes the rain. Oh, you take dear. the tray, Roger. I'll, I'll get oh, the cushions off the, the chair. Right. Too, darling. Hey, look, I'll help you with that. Uh, go on. Uh, you go on with Roger. I, you, you'll get soaked. Oh, Here, don't be these. silly. It's only a summer shower. Oh, look, t take the tray right to the kitchen, Roger, and introduce yourself to Gertrude. If my courage doesn't desert me. <laughs> I know, Roger. A reminder that you have to catch the 806. Right. Well, you well, bet come you on, can't come on, come on, hurry out of this rain, but don't rush. Hey, it's getting worse. Well, it hit someplace near the house. Oh, come on. There, here we are. You look like a little drowned rat. Well, you don't look so handsome yourself with your hair plastered down. <laughs> Flash almost blinded me. David, you all right? Sure, I'm fine. Get in, out of this. What's happened to Roger, I wonder? <laughs> He's probably making up to Gertrude. That <laughs> is precisely what I intend to do this moment. Claudia, come here. Come what? here while I kiss you what? soundly and with increasing respect and admiration upon both cheeks. Now what have I done? Oh, what haven't you done? Such adjectives as extraordinary, incredible, and remarkable fail to describe you. Goodness. I shall have to get an entirely new vocabulary. He's crazy. I know I'm wonderful, but not that wonderful. Yes, what's, uh, what's this all about? Oh, yes. Look here, you two. You can pull my leg so far and no further. There is no Gertrude. What? Gertrude is a myth, a figment of the imagination, a projection of a paragon of competence. David, what is he talking about? I am talking about David's wife. Orders under the apple tree. A turkey roasted to a turn waiting on the stove. An apple pie sitting on the windowsill. I closed the window, by the way, or it would have gotten wet. And look at her. As sweet and then ruffled <laughs> as a summer day. <laughs> and I really fell for that story of the perfect maid. Hey, come back here. Where are you going? Hey, wait for me. Claudia, don't trip over that rug. Gertrude! Gertrude! David, she's not here. Well, where is she? Well, I don't know. Everything's ready to serve, and Gertrude isn't here. <laughs> David, Roger doesn't believe that Gertrude really is. Producer, she's... she's gone. She can't be. Look in the dining room. We came through the dining room. And she's... she's not in the pantry or any place. <laughs> now listen. Why carry a joke beyond its funniest point? Are I've you... got a train to catch, so let's carve the turkey and start right in. I'm famished. We've got the soup first. Excellent. I adore soup. And here we are. The soup plates all set out above the stove. Claudia, will you allow me to ladle? Yes, yes, ladle. David, this is serious. We have lost Gertrude. Say, we've lost Bluff, too. Bluff! Here, Bluff. Here, Bluff. Claudia, That's right. Bluff. Where is the dog? Yes, Roger, what answer have you got for that? I suppose we never had a Great Dane dog. Doubtless your mother took him with her into New York. Oh, that's all Mama needs. She might have gotten sick and gone home. Who, Mama? No, no, not Mama. Gertrude. Oh, and she might have taken the dog with her. Oh, no, she would have told us. But listen, phone her house and see anyway. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, What's the matter? The phone's on the blink. Oh, I don't wonder. Sure. You probably won't have light or water either. Oh, you're cheering us up no end. Oh, here's Shakespeare. Shakespeare, where is everybody? Hmm, he won't talk. Come on, time's a fleeting. I'm putting the soup on the table. Be careful of that swing door. It comes back and hits you when you least expect it. Ah! Oh, so it does. <laughs> oh, Roger, you look so funny. <laughs> Listen, David, this is no joke. What could have happened to Gertrude? Well, I haven't the faintest notion. 
All I know is that Roger will never in the world believe we haven't been pulling his leg about her. You think he really thinks I'm wonderful enough to have had hors d'oeuvres under the apple tree and cooked this marvelous dinner at the same time? <laughs> you, you heard him say so. Very well, then. I might as well have the game as the name. Listen, after Roger's train leaves, we'll attend to the matter of finding one lost maid and one lost Great Dane dog. But in the meantime, Gertrude is... The cat, out of Gertrude's way. Mr. Norton, hand me that plate for the roll. Come on, you don't know what you're missing. The soup is wonderful. We're coming. And the pie was the best. Of all. I'm glad you enjoyed everything, Roger. Enjoyed it? That is a complete understatement of fact. Mm. You will pardon me for being proud of my wife, will you not? Such soup, such turkey, <laughs> such salad. And you Don't will pardon me it. if I remain speechless. I've run out of my second set of adjectives. Oh, really? Now, what's so hard about... Throwing together a little dinner. I'd like to see the average young bride do it. <laughs> well, you just have. <laughs> what? Hey, what was that? Did I hear something? Sounded like a door opening and closing. Listen. Someone's huh. walking around the kitchen. <laughs> David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I, I wonder who it could be. <laughs> Gertrude. Hey, Gertrude, is that you? Yes, sir, it's me. Well, you went and ate. Land sakes, I don't see how you could have the stomach to with a thunder and lightning fit to kill a body. I ain't afraid of nothing else in the world but thunder and lightning. It just scares me stiff. Yes, sir, Bob, me and Bluff went down the cellar to be safe. He's still down there shivering like a leaf. How was the turkey? Oh, fine. You didn't fix the gravy right, Mrs. Norton. I you should have added the yolk of the egg I had all beat up and ready. I should. I couldn't imagine what that yolk of egg was for. Well, anyway, the storm cleaned up in time for me to serve the finger bowls. I'll have them right here in a jiffy. Hope you enjoyed your dinner, Mr. Killian. Oh, I'm starting out on my third set of adjectives. Of all the unscrupulous, incorrigible, unpredictable... Are you talking about my wife, sir? He is talking about your wife, sir. Dum-dum. <laughs> 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 When the young people come trooping in with their friends and head for the refrigerator, you know what they're after. And if they don't find Coca-Cola enough to go round, you can just imagine the disappointed exclamations. So you'll find it's wise to follow the example of so many mothers today and order Coke by the case. Your grocer or gas station attendant will put a case in the car for you. Put Coke on your shopping list today. So there really is a Gertrude. Yes, there really is, and... Uh... Quite a Gertrude she is. Dinner certainly was delicious. Well, from now on, I think life will go pretty smoothly for the Nortons. It'll go smoothly till Monday, at any rate. Only until Monday. What happens then? Well, I don't want to tip my mitt, but Claudia is going to receive a letter. Well, that's not so very unusual, is it? This happens to be a very unusual letter. So unusual that Claudia isn't even going to tell Mama and David about it. Well, that is unusual. What happens? You'd better wait until Monday to find out, so I'll see you then. You will indeed. Goodbye, Mr. King. Bye. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>